All right, guys. So if you have followed me on social media, then you guys know I do, in fact, have a Demon 170. Now, the story behind this car is a very unique story that is very tied into the whole situation with a soldier and Mac Hake. Now, I'm not sure how much the story that I can tell. I'm going to see from Dodge how much I can tell about the story, but I'll give you guys a, like a general outline of the story. In this video, I want to basically tell you guys about the delivery and kind of like an overarching story about this particular car, which is my Sublime Green Demon 170, VIN number 121. So after the crappy intro, we're going to get right into it. <laughs> Now, before we get into today's video, I want to talk about today's video sponsor, Gordon and Partners, because without this particular law firm, I would have not gotten this Demon 170 because I have gotten scammed by maybe twice. Yeah, twice by different Dodge dealerships on trying to get a Demon 170. I got scammed by Rick Hendrick and then I got scammed by Burns Motors, who basically one of their salesmen had me give them a deposit and then he didn't give me the wire information for the actual dealership but an actual straw buyer that they used to straw buy cars and then the dealership wanted to claim that hey and we never got a deposit from you that's between you and your salesman but thanks to my friends at gordon and partners that saw through their bs sent them a few emails and then this year-long saga i've been on with this particular dealership i got my money back and if it wasn't for me getting my money back like i said this d170 would not have happened because i would not have had most of the deposit for this particular car so if you're having problems with dealerships and you need someone to talk to and you have no one to turn to you can contact my friends at gordon and partners and my special email address that gives you connected to, to the lawyers who will fight for your behalf or fight on your behalf so you can reach them at my special email address at butter at for the injured.com that is butter at for the injured.com and they'll give you the help that you need and that you deserve. Now, this Demon 170, I had no idea I was going to get this car until a few weeks after the whole Mac 8 situation with the soldier. Um, basically, my number one priority that I've told everyone, I told the soldier this, I told Tim Kaniscus this, I told Dodge this, I told anybody who talked to me during this time period, they knew that my number one priority was to make sure that every single customer affected by that Mac Hake Flowwood store was taken care of. It was not even a second thought in my mind to even get a Demon 170 or even ask for a Demon 170 because I was not going to abuse my ability now that Tim Kinesis had called me like, what was that, like two days after Christmas, that now I have his cell phone number and then we're me and him chatting back and forth about this whole Mac Hake situation. I was not going to abuse that privilege to award myself or come up like, hey, you know, I can talk to the boss of Dodge. Let me go see if he'll get me a Demon 170. I did not want to do that. And I've told everyone, every single person I talked to, my number one priority is to make sure all the other customers are taken care of. And quite frankly, every other customer that I'm proud of was taken care of before I was even a thought. The, the customer that bought the, the Soldier Demon 170, he got a car at MSRP. The customer who that no one really knows about that got screwed the day before all this happened with the soldier's car he got taken care of the soldier he got taken care of so all the customers who were involved in this were taken care of and they were taken care of by the mac hate gm that i called out in the second video will lagrange he took care of every single customer he worked with every single customer no matter what time of day it was now, he definitely has a great redemption arc because he took up for his friend that basically lied to his face. And then once he found out that this guy through TK's videos, this guy was basically a stone faced liar. I'm pretty sure that him and the CEO of Matt Kate, they flew to Flo Flowood, Mississippi and walked that GM out who did this whole crap that was lying to their faces and lying to Tim Kinnis's face and lying to Dodge's face and lying to the soldier's face. They walked that dude out, gave him his walking papers. And ever since then, 
Will LaGrange has been above board. I would definitely like to commend him for taking care of every single customer and even, you know, the ones that no one even knew about. He's a great guy and I could not have thought of no other person than to take delivery of my car with what's him. But I'll get to that one in a second. I had no clue that this was going to happen at any time when the whole Matt Cake situation broke down. I, and I, and Tim Knisses, he'll tell you himself, I never one single time asked him to get me a Demon 170. I didn't ask no one at Dodge. I didn't ask no one at Mac Hate. I even turned down a car at Mac Hate that they was going to offer me. And I think, yeah, TK turned down one too. I'm just going to say that someone at Dodge, I'm not going to say exactly who, but someone in Dodge offered me a car sometime late January. You can probably guess exactly who it is, but they offered me a car and it's kind of hard to say no to someone of that importance. And definitely without him and the situation happening, I definitely would never got a car without any of you guys commenting and, and raising, you know, so much crap with that dealership. This definitely would not have happened. I'm not going to tell you exactly yet where this car came from because I don't know when I'm allowed to say it, but I will say that this car and the soldier's car, they are like neck to neck related. If it was not for the soldier's new car, this car would not have happened. And I think it'd be a great story to talk about it when I get this car and the soldier's car, the new one together, because it, it really completes the story between these two cars. But I found out late January that I was going to get this car and I had no idea if I could actually afford a car because, you know, this, this is right after Christmas and I spent a lot of money trying to upgrade this YouTube setup. You can see with the camera quality, the microphone. I mean, here goes my little uh, mixer amp. Um, I got, you know, more mics and stuff in my remote setup, um, my new editing laptop. I spent a lot of money to improve the quality of the videos that I make going forward. I mean, you can see with animations like this one right here that I spent a lot of money to invest into the channel to make better quality videos. And so that's why my friends at Gordon and Partners, they were the best, they were the first big help of me getting this car because like I said, I got scammed out of several thousands of dollars with that uh, Burns Motors dealership. And if it was not for my friends at Gordon and Partners, like I said, this demon would not happen. That's the story with that. And then the other part of the money, some of you guys chipped in because people would help me out because I helped so many people out, you know, during this whole time period of like what, January, February, March. I mean, me, TK, OC Motivator, Lucky Lopez and the, and the gang. I mean, we probably helped out dozens of people and some of you guys chipped in and I'm definitely grateful for that. And then I raised money myself from working hard as crap because I've been going hard the last three months. That's why you seen TK saying his videos that Butter is doing what he's doing because I was working hard as crap in the background, um, doing my actual full-time job and then helping you guys in the background. And so it, it was basically a long road. So it took me from basically the last week of January all the way until basically the middle of March to actually get the funds together to buy this car. And in between that same time frame. My credit was was bad and it wasn't because of anything that i did and it was because the department of education they basically they had some of my student loans shown as collections on my credit report and they were not in collections they were actually loans that, that i actually had that was taken care of years ago they were just in there by mistake and so me being dumb i just did not realize that they was in there taking my credit score down and i had to basically you know get the department of education to fix that and um i had to get letters and stuff saying that hey these these accounts are not in collections and then once i got that fixed i was able to get approved i get so busy at times that i just forget about the small stuff and uh you know trying to do youtube trying to do my full-time job trying to be a dad at the same time is i definitely will be forever grateful for everybody that uh, helped me in this situation it, it 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 does feel great that this is a story where everyone came on top in the end like I said, there's more to the story and I'm going to wait to see if I can actually tell more of it um, because I literally got called out of the blue about this car right here and I literally about cried on the damn phone to the Dodge person I was talking to. I, I literally was pausing for a second 
and I was literally about to damn cry. But yeah, and then, you know, I had basically when I had everything locked up, said and done, I told Dodge, hey, look, release this car to the Mad Cake in Houston store. Because as I said earlier, the Will LaGrange from the Mad Cake Houston store, he went above and beyond to make sure every single customer affected by the other Mad Cake store was taken care of. And I could have thought of no other person that I would want to take delivery of my car with. But yeah, this car right here is basically a plain Jane car. It's basically just sublime green with the uh, black leather seats. So I don't have cloth and has navigation in it. And that's essentially it. There's not really nothing on there, right? I mean, I probably would have liked to have like the uh, the matte black finish on like the, the hood and the roof. Um, I would love to have car on fiber wheels, but I mean, that's about it. I can't really think of anything else I would have wanted on this car. But I mean, those stuff are just things I can add on after the fact. Um, I, I told him just to clean up the outside. Don't take down nothing out of the inside of the car. Just leave all the plastic in there because I didn't want really you know, anything gone. I want to try to keep as much stuff from this car as possible. My car did not come with a window sticker, so I guess I got to go and ask Dodge for them to send one to me, especially with my name on it. And this order does have my name on it. Um, I did want this car to be signed by everybody that was involved with the whole story of me getting this car. You know, I, I was I was kind of shocked that like, you know, when I got the car, I looked in the trunk that it had carpet in the trunk. I, I thought that if you didn't have the trunk dress kit, that, you, that your car wouldn't have any carpet in it. So I was going to hopefully get everyone to sign the, you know, the, the bottom side of the, of the, of the uh, deck lid. But it had carpet in it. So I was kind of surprised and I was like, dang, that was the one spot I want everyone to sign. So. I think once I get my winter sticker from Dodge, I think I want like maybe two copies of it. And that way I want pretty much everyone involved to maybe sign the back of one of those winter stickers. Probably a little bit easier to get everyone to sign a winter sticker than to get them to sign a car. It's a lot easier to ship a, ship a winter sticker than it is to ship a car. But yeah, it was uh, basically a great experience. I finally got the sublime green car that has been eluding me for years. Ever since, what, 2016, 2017, when I got my first Hellcat, I didn't even know sublime green was a color. And then I think like the next year after that, Dodge discontinued the colors. I was like, oh, crap. And so I didn't get one. And then when it came last year, when I was trying to, I guess, basically two years ago, when the horsepower locator came out, I placed the order with Chapman in uh, Pennsylvania for a subline green red eye and that car got delivered to chapman literally the week yeah literally the week of the uh, demo 170 being revealed and then i called the first day to rick hendrick and well no i didn't call they called me twice first they called me like hey we're going through our list to see who was first on our list then they called me like two hours later and like hey you're the first on our list um it's like a um i think what a thousand dollar deposit and so I told Chapman, like, look, I got a D-170, um, I got D-170 uh, allocation. I'm going to pass on this car, uh, which I, I should have just bought the car and then just traded it in when D-170 came in. That's what I should have did. And then I found out a couple weeks later that Rick Hendrick personally snatched my D-170 allocation from me. And so by the time that happened, the car was gone. So I couldn't go get my red eye. So Rick Hendrick technically screwed me out of two cars. A Sublime Green D-17 I would have ordered and a Red Eye that I had sitting there at Chapman that I passed because I thought that I had the allocation. And then uh, one with the Burns Motors, I'm going to order a Sublime Green D-170. And then when they sent me the paperwork and stuff and I found out that basically when I sent my deposit money to the wire that the salesman gave me, it wasn't the dealership's wire. And then they sent me some contract papers talking about I had to be the second owner of the car because they're the straw buyer is going to basically buy the car and then i got a co-sign with him and then pay the loan off to get the co-signer off the loan it was some nonsense in that paperwork but that's how i got screwed on the second demon that was supposed to be subline green and I, when i do a video about burn motors i'm going to show you the paperwork that they try to have me sign that's basically what three times I got screwed out of a subline green car. And uh, like I said, I'm definitely grateful for everybody to help me out because if it wasn't for that, I definitely would not have gotten this car. 
definitely would not have gotten this car. One for everybody who looked out for me, especially when I looked out for everybody else. It just, those moments where you have strangers that you never met. And I never met, I never met anybody that I helped. And it was just like, you know, you got strangers that dang sure does not look like me. And they just look out for you like that. That's just a beautiful thing. And I mean, like even, you know, Tim Kniss is like, I make no mistake. I made videos painting him in a negative light. And for him to still help me out with situations and help you got situations and actually respond back to me in text messages, trying to fix situations. Tim Kniss is a stand up guy. But yeah, um, it's going to be a pretty quick, not really quick, but it's going to be a pretty long time period until we get some content on the channel with this car. We're going to see what's going to happen, but this car will be here. I just got to kind of figure out when, and I'll give you guys an update of when I'm actually going to actually have it in my possession, but I do own the car. My name is on the paperwork, and I'm pretty sure my first payment is due like May 6th or something like that. So that's it for this video. I know it's getting pretty long, and um, the crazy part is that wasn't even all the whole story of how I got this car. So let me know what you guys think. And like I said, thank you to every single person who watched the channel and my friends are going to partners help me out. All you guys in the background that help me out, donate me some money. So I want to thank every single freaking person. But uh, let me know what you guys think. And until the next time, I'm out.